Them people there that live at home with their parents, they're so dumb, blood. You should use, seize that opportunity to save your Ross Clark money. How are you driving a fucking Mercedes 300, C300, C2? I don't care what Mercedes it is. You should not be driving no Mercedes. You're living in a box room upstairs. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mel. I'm 24. I work a full-time job in London and I still live with my parents. And I also do finance a car. I've seen this video come up on my FYP and I wanted to talk about this point about how you shouldn't be financing something like a Mercedes if you're still living at home. And I disagree with this and here's why. I will be making a full separate video for why you should live at home if you can, if you're a working professional and especially in London. But for now, I'm just going to address the point about financing a Mercedes or something similar if you're still living at home. Now I've spoken to colleagues and friends about how much they pay in rent and bills uh, when it comes to living out in London and they say roughly £1,200 a month. Living at home, I don't have to pay a set amount of rent. In fact, my parents don't even ask me for rent. I will offer, however, to pay bills or for example, grocery or for example, do favours such as taking my parents to London so then they can go to specific uh, bazaar shops and whatnot. However, there is no expectation for me to pay something like £1,200 a month to my parents to live at home. Now keep the £1,200 a month in mind. By the way, when I say rent, I also mean bills included with that rent and that will include things like council tax and your TV license and whatnot. Assume you are in a situation where you are living at home and you're not paying a set amount of rent or even no rent at all. That is £1,200 a month that you can play with or decide to save entirely. Now I think it's unreasonable to say that you're going to be saving that entire amount. Chances are if you're living at home you're going to be a bit more uh, free with how you spend but also be able to save. So I'm going to give you an example when it comes to a Mercedes specifically. Before my current car I had a Mercedes A200D AMG Line Premium Plus which is a 17 grand car and I was paying £318 a month roughly on a PCP deal for four years. Now let's go back to the figure of £1,200 a month. If you subtract 318 from that, you'll still have £882 a month left. And even if you decide to include the cost of insurance, so let's say for example £100 a month, which leaves you with uh, £782 a month, that is a lot of money that you still have left behind and you're still able to drive that Mercedes that you want to. So by living at home, you have the freedom to not only drive a nice car, but also have plenty of money to be able to save towards things like a house deposit. Like I say, I will be making a full video as to why I advise living at home rather than moving out uh, if you're a professional, especially in London. But for the point of this video, if you are living at home, it is okay, I would say, to drive a nice car such as a Mercedes, another German, or even for example, for myself right now, I'm driving a Ford Focus Titanium X, which is a top spec car. It's got like heated seats and all this other stuff, which is really nice. Because like I say, I'm managing to save at the same time and have the luxury of driving a car. Now you could argue that the money that you're spending on a car on a finance deal could go towards saving uh, even more or for example reinvesting it into something that will make you a return on investment. However, not many people will do this, let's be realistic. And so we find a nice balance between having a luxury but also looking ahead towards the future. I'm keen to get your thoughts on this, especially if you're a working professional. Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.